The real problem in my photography wasn't that I was in what I thought was a boring location, but I was being sabotaged by preconceived ideas that were putting up a barrier to creating great pictures in those allegedly boring locations. How's it, how's it? If you are new here to the channel, my name is Alex, a big warm welcome to the photographic eye. There's this idea going around that the world is just boring and that there's nothing to photograph if you are living in a place that's dull. But once you kind of realize that there are things to photograph, how do you actually go about taking those photographs? Okay, so the biggest hurdle are these preconceived ideas that are making it very difficult to photograph in, in any place that we find ourselves. And the other day, Ted Forbes, I think, got very close to the solution to this. He was talking about how he found it unusual that when he got interested in photography, as somebody with a musical background, that photographers did not act like musicians, that they had an interest in the history of music and who went before and, and all the ideas and avenues that people could explore within music. As photographers, most people follow the route like I did when I got started. I, I picked up my camera, it was my dad's camera, and I looked and asked him what to photograph. That's starting to already build up preconceived notions about what is and what isn't a photograph. And Ted was saying that, you know, he found it kind of amazing when he started exploring other photographers, people from history. And I had that opportunity as well. I went into photo school with all these kind of ideas in my head about what was worthy of a photograph. And all of a sudden, I got exposed to people who had been taking photographs of very everyday objects, mundane things, for want of a better word. And that completely changed my idea about what was able to be photographed. And you can do the same thing. You don't need to go off to art school. All you need is one little awesome thing. Now, Ted didn't really talk about it, but a book like this, Photographers A to Z by Tashin, is so invaluable into helping you break down these preconceived ideas because you can flick through this and see examples of things that you may have dismissed as not interesting to photograph, but have been photographed in an interesting way. And that, I think, gets over that major hurdle that we all have that how do we photograph something different if we haven't had a little bit of inspiration? So once you start to explore the history of photography, you see people like Paul Strand, that you see people like Laszlo moholy Naj, Jacques-Henri Lartigue, all these guys and, and countless others are creating very interesting photographs. The, the, the image on the thumbnail for this video is by a photographer called Harry Callahan who was one of those photographers who asks that so vital question in breaking down these preconceived ideas of what if? What if I make a double exposure? What if I jump around? What if I try some funky kind of process or whatever? He's exploring. What if I focus on color? These are questions that you can ask yourself. You know, I'm, I'm kind of going along there as well. So as soon as I was going to photo school and I'm being exposed to people, you know, who are in these little books and, th you know, this is like 12 quid. So you've saved yourself a whole photo school education right there that you, it's a lot easier to ask that question. That What if, what am I going to photograph? How am I going to approach this thing? Why does that thing over there interest me? And how can I photograph it in a way that isn't obvious. That goes so far to breaking down those preconceived notions about how things are supposed to look, which we've been spoon fed since we were babies. It's not our fault. We just need to learn to see the world as a photographer does. And that was what the process was happening for three years when I was being introduced to a whole range of images that were filling up a memory bank that I could use as inspiration. Do yourself a favor, right? Invest in something like this. Or if you don't really want it, if you know books are not your thing, and you can tell me I am because this is just a selection of some of my books over here in the background, go online. Look on, you know, for, for people who like. Think about a photographer 
from from history whose work you like, even if it's somebody just like, you know, Ansel Adams. Okay, cool. Ansel Adams, he's a starting point. Most people know who he is. Put him in Google. Say, who was influenced by Ansel Adams? And that starts to lead you down that rabbit hole, much like Ted was probably doing, and I did certainly when I was you know, interested in music as a teenager, that you find a band you like, and you say, oh, I like this band. Who else can I like? Which, which, where do they lead me? So once we know about you know, how things can look, what is the way to actually put this into practice in our photography? And, and I, I was actually, it was a very recent thing, but it's a, it's a fantastic story, which I'm going to share with you, which is going to put this into sharp perspective. Every Saturday morning, I sit down with my coffee at the desk over here and I write my weekly newsletter. It's called Saturday Selections. And it goes out to thousands of photographers around the world, much like yourself, who are looking to be inspired, looking to jump deeper into the why we take photographs and, and move forward in their creative journeys. If you'd like to join this community, then please click on the link in the description box below or on this fancy QR code on the screen. It's a newsletter. Of course, you are free to unsubscribe at any time. And it's, it's completely free. I'd love to see you there. Thank you ever so much. Right. So now we've got like a little bit of inspiration action going on. You know, so, OK, how do we put this into practice? How do you start actually taking photographs like that? And I'm going to turn to a quote by Gary Winogrand. Uh, and, and in this case, I'm going to read it because I always get these things wrong, that photography is not about the thing photographed. It is about how that thing looks photographed. The other day, I was down in London with a couple of photographers. We were doing like a photo walk and, you know, the weather's rubbish. It's all raining and stuff. So we, we had a little chat before we got started and the weather eased off and we were walking along the streets near Liverpool Street. and. An interesting thing happened. Every now and again, one of the photographers, he would see someone and he'd go, oh, that, that might make a cool photograph. And he'd look at it for a bit. And you see the world, you know, the wheels in motion in the head. And then he'd go, mm, that'd be rubbish. And he wouldn't bother. And I understand, after I spoke to him, where he's coming from. He said, you know, I, I, he wants to improve a bit and, you know, and, and feel like it's going to be a rubbish photograph. So what's the point of taking it? You know, kind of let's just let's only take things that are going to be good. And, and, and I think within that is is one of the main causes about why people think we only have boring places to photograph and why preconceived ideas are so insidious is that it stops us taking Photographs. I had the same thing. You know, when I was a student, obviously film cost me money and I would be mindful about the frames that I took, not least because I wanted to take great photographs to impress my friends. I didn't want them to see them that, oh my God, I, I might not take a good picture. They might laugh at it. So there's lots of, you know, worries going on in my head. But as soon as I kind of started going, do you know what? Okay, I'm going to actually make a conscious effort to listen to the voice in my gut that says that's something interesting that person over there has caught your attention that light what is it about that light now none of these things are specifically genres that i photograph in for myself but if i photograph all these things then i am practicing i am practicing reacting to something i am practicing how to make something from an object that interests me so when I do find myself in an environment where I want to find interesting things in the genre that I photograph, it's so much easier. Just take the picture. Be like Gary Winogrand. Be like all the other photographers who we looked at who were in this book. They didn't just sit there and go, I'm not going to take the picture because it's going to be rubbish. They at least just went, I'm going to take the picture and I'm going to find out. I'm going to see what it looks like. The more that you do this, the more that every time you take a, a, a click of the shutter, you are breaking down those walls of these preconceived ideas that are hemming in your photography. One of the reasons why I started this channel is because I wanted to share the knowledge about a wider world of photography with 
people like yourself who haven't had the benefit of, of maybe going to art school or knowing about loads of photographers. But once you take a step into that world, that it leads you places. Think about when you start getting into music, maybe as a teenage or film, that you kind of went, oh, do you know, I really like the work of, I could say the work, the, yes, the fine works of Led Zeppelin. Then you find out who they influenced. You find modern versions of them. You kind of, oh, I like that as well. You find out who influenced Led Zeppelin. And you broaden your, your palette. And you do this in photography as well. You broaden your, in, your, your visual palette, that memory bank. Annie Leibovitz talks about this it, it, so often. She says it's like she carries around a hard drive in her head that she stores images in that she sees and then she can draw on them for inspiration. And that's why it seems when you're standing next to somebody who's taking a photograph and you go, I have, I've not, how did, how did they see that picture? How did they make it look so effortless? Is because they have a store of images to draw from. They have looked at photography that inspires them. They've gone beyond just following some people on Instagram or one or two books. They've jumped in with both feet. They, they lodge them here. They also sit and go, do you know what? I'm just going to photograph. I'm going to photograph and I'm going to photograph. Most of the time, there's a load of pictures I took over the weekend that just didn't work out. But you know what? Next time I see a scene like that, I'm going to know that the way that I photographed it the first time didn't work out. So I can try something different. It is a process. You are always growing as a photographer. I never stopped growing since I first picked up that Canon A1. And I've still got like tons to learn. But it's an awesome journey. Just let's not sabotage it by saying that there's nothing to photograph. So we've been looking at, you know, breaking down preconceived ideas in photography. And, you know, so the next step is to apply the language of photography, so we can express ourselves in our photographs even better. And look at that, look, some big wasp has come attacked me. Ah, go away wasp. Um, right, so there we go. Anyway, so yeah, check out this video over here. It will teach you about the language of photography. I hope I'm not gonna get attacked by this wasp again, and I will see you again soon.